The following is another free preview from my online course all about manual metering for film photography. But it's only one of over 45 videos on the complete course. If you like what you see here, please consider taking a look at the course to see if it might be a good fit for you. But either way, enjoy the video. Let's talk about exposure bracketing. Now there's a good chance most of you know what exposure bracketing is, but just in case anyone's unclear, exposure bracketing is the act of taking multiple photos of the same composition, but at different brightnesses, different exposures. So for instance, you might take your first composition at what you think is the correct metering, so the, your idea of a correct exposure, but then you take a second one that's darker and maybe a third one that's brighter. And then that gives you uh, three different exposures to pick from later. Basically, exposure bracketing is a way to cover your ass. Um, you're unsure of your metering, you don't know if you got the correct exposure, you take multiple exposures, pick it out later. That way it's not your problem. It's a problem for future you to figure out on the light table. But exposure bracketing, um, I'll be honest, I don't do it very much. The thing with the precision method to manual metering that you've learned is uh, it works really well. So you just often won't find a need to bracket. Like you'll do your whole metering process and then you'll think like, maybe should I bracket this? But then you'll like think about it, you'll be like, no, I know that's right, why would I, why would I bracket it? So you may not find a need to bracket very often if you're doing the precision method. But that being said, you know, there's still some instances where it comes in handy. Um, so when you should bracket, obviously if you're unsure of your metering. Like for instance, if you're still kind of new to this precision method, you know, you still got your training wheels on, still getting your sea legs under you, um, and you're not quite perfect at it yet, might be a good time to bracket if it's a real important photo. Um, or maybe you're in a lighting condition that you haven't experienced very often, so you're a little shaky on your ability to handle it. Like for instance, I do daytime exposures much more frequently than I do like dusk exposures. So when I go to do a dusk exposure, I'm much more likely to bracket than if I'm doing a daytime exposure. Just because I don't do it as often, I'm a little less confident in my ability to get a perfect exposure. So that'd be a good time to bracket. Or if you're utilizing one of the quick and dirty methods to manual metering we covered, so you don't have an opportunity to apply the precision method, you have to utilize one of the quick and dirty methods, that might be a good time to bracket. Because the quick and dirty methods that we covered, by their nature, they're a little dirty. So your exposure may not be perfect. And bracketing is a good way to kind of cover yourself, just in case the exposure wasn't spot on. And then finally, if you're shooting color reversal film, that's a pretty good time to bracket. Because uh, as we covered previously, color reversal film is so unforgiving of incorrect exposure. You know, if you're off by two thirds of a stop on color reversal film, that can really screw things up. Um, but print film is much more forgiving. So if you're shooting color reversal film, that might be a good time to bracket just because uh, you don't have the leeway to correct it later like you do with print film. Now, if you are going to bracket, here's some tips to keep in mind. First off, if you're doing color reversal film, I would bracket one half to two thirds of a stop. Um, so bracketing by only a third of a stop is such a small jump that it's not even really worth doing. That can be pretty easily corrected uh, in scanning or printing if you're off by a third of a stop. And a full stop is a little too big of a jump on color reversal film. Um, so one half to two thirds of a stop, that's ideal. Whereas if you're shooting print film, negatives, bracket two thirds of a stop to one stop. It's really not worth shoot bracketing one third of a stop or even a half stop on print film because print film has so much leeway afterwards that bracketing by a half stop or a third is like nothing. You don't even notice it. They look the same on the light table practically. So I actually typically bracket a full stop when I'm doing uh, print film because two thirds of a stop even is maybe a little too narrow of a change, a full stop, I really start to notice it. Also, don't bracket more than necessary. Be smart about it. So oftentimes you'll see bracketing just goes like this, zero minus plus, meaning you do your correct exposure and then you do a minus and then you do a plus. And some people do that on every single bracket, zero minus plus, zero minus plus, zero minus plus. And it's a complete waste of film because you can be smarter about it than that. Like for instance, if I'm shooting print film, I often won't bracket a darker exposure. Because as we covered in the previous video, print film, you're better off overexposing than underexposing. So I usually do a correct exposure and then one exposure that's a little brighter. And if I'm doing reversal film, I do the opposite. I do a correct exposure and then just one that's a little darker because reversal film does better underexposed than overexposed. So you don't always have to do a minus and plus. 
you can just do a zero and then one uh, minus or one plus. And then finally, don't let it become a crutch. This is my biggest complaint about bracketing and um, one of the reasons I often don't teach it to people until pretty far along in their photography journey. I, don't, I really don't ever teach it to beginners um, because it can become a crutch so easily. Like people see it as like free license to be sloppy. Like, oh, why go through all this precision method stuff? I'm just gonna do zero minus plus, zero minus plus on every single exposure. That's fine if you wanna be sloppy, but I'll, there's some problems with that. Number one, film ain't getting any cheaper. Um, so no reason to waste film and waste the money if you really don't have to, if you can just be a little more careful when you're shooting. But secondly, I'll tell you what always happens when you bracket, at least it does to me, because that's how the universe works for me. Let's say I do a bracket of zero minus and plus. What always happens is the perfect exposure was the worst moment, the worst timing, and the perfect timing was the worst exposure. It's like it always works out that way for me. So I don't really like relying on bracketing too much because you're relying too much on the stars aligning. Like I need the perfect timing to line up with the perfect exposure. But if you do the precision method properly, you won't need to bracket very much and you can make sure you get the timing right every time and then the uh, exposure is going to be right every time as well. So that's when to bracket, that's how to do it. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in class.